Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see you all here. We're with a we the blessing number. Probably something to do with the bank holiday and that big orange thing in the sky that we don't see very often. And we're all very, very welcome this morning to our service of uh, the Word in this Trinity Sunday. Uh, just by way of announcements, just a couple of things to highlight to you. Um, please do remember the, the parish news sheet, Alan Anderson, um, and with the times and dates. Uh, I want to mention that um, Mother's Union Overseas Missionary Donations are due over the next two weeks, and you can pass those on to Elizabeth Hearn, or if you want to give them to me, Elizabeth Hearn, if you give them to me, I can pass them on to her. Uh, so please do do that. that. Uh, YF is next Sunday evening, and we'll be in the Mugga again over in the primary school. And then on the evening after that, Monday the 7th of June, I know I've mentioned this to you before, do take a note. Uh, a game of football, I keep looking at you now for some reason. A game of football in the Mugga between 7 and 8 on Monday the 7th of June. Uh, that's uh, open to any men in the, in the village, Salters Grange or here in Loch Ball. This gives you an opportunity, maybe you know a neighbour who um, you haven't spoken to in 30 years and you'd like to say hello to him. You can invite him along to play football. Uh, or anyone, anyone that you know, but uh, we are keeping it to two men and, uh, and boys in the, in the village as opposed to, you know, don't want somebody brought in from the Lavadi or somewhere and just because he's a really good footballer. Um, we'll do that when we're playing some of the other churches, I think. <laughs> now, on that, actually, uh, that communication already from Sam Finley, who's the Presbyterian minister in, over in Red Rock. No, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> they have a brand new hall and a brand new outdoor, uh, like, mugger with the lights. That's all I'm saying. I said, I, I mentioned to him that if all goes well with us, it, they could be our first event match. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll, we'll maybe just see how we go on Monday the 7th of June first, and see if there's 11 people we can pick from. Um, but do burn that out. So confident that now that there's going to be a good turnout on the 7th of June, that week. I've added in another night already, Monday the 21st of June, two weeks later. I should give some of you a chance to recover. <laughs> so two weeks should do you. Uh, do please um, note everything that's on uh, the list for June. You can see it's quite a busy month, and hopefully we'll get the weather to match as well. Um, I'm just going to mention one other thing on Saturday the 3rd of July. So we have a good number uh, wanting to attend Summer Madness, which is great. Uh, it's going to be a day trip, and uh, that's a good to see a good response to that. Uh, one last thing I just wanted to mention was, you can see on the bottom here, The Chosen. This is a most amazing series. Um, you can't watch it on, like, um, it's not on Apple TV or Sky TV, it's not on Netflix or anything. It's completely independently funded, uh, crowdfunded, and it's available by an app on your phone. You download the app to your phone, and then you can cast it on Chromecast or whatever onto your TV. But we're on uh, the second season now, I nearly finished the second season, watch it. And it is unbelievable. It is un it totally and utterly brings the Bible to life. Uh, like all, all that stuff I'm you know, sharing with you on a, on a Sunday morning, uh, it just brings it all to life. It's it's done so so well, and they keep really really close to the uh, the gospel um, stories, gospel passages, and what have you. Uh, the cast are, are unbelievable, and the guy that plays Jesus, uh, honestly, it's just, it's just remarkable. Have you watched it? Um, this is Patricia, by the way. I want to say thank you to Patricia. She's filling in for Trevor. He's away selling himself somewhere this weekend. Uh, Patricia, thank you so much for, for filling in. But uh, the guy who plays Jesus is unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Um, it shivers down your spine as you watch it. As you see him interacting with all the stories that we know in the Gospels. You know, the leper and all that, and Mary Magdalene and stuff. It's just incredible. It's just, I sound like a salesman. I'm trying to sell it. I'm not on commission or anything. Um, Please do, 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 do think about it and give it a wee watch. And uh, they continue to make more episodes as the money keeps coming in. And they've raised something like one and a half million dollars. So as the money keeps coming in, they keep making another episode and another episode. And it is really and utterly remarkable, uh, I can assure you. Okay. Anyway, I think that's, that's all the announcements. Uh, so we're here to worship uh, the Lord in this beautiful, uh, sunny, Sunday morning, and let's just bow our heads and prayer as we begin. Father God, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we rejoice because we are glad in it. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful sunshine and the blue sky and the fact that we're alive and we're here, Lord, 
and we have this opportunity in person to worship you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless our time together. Lord, for those who are watching uh, this service, this recording of this service, Lord, I pray, Lord, too, that you would bless them. And Lord, that you would move in our hearts, Lord, in the power of your spirit, Lord. Draw us closer to you and closer to each other. Ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to stand to sing our only hymn of worship, Spirit of God, and sing as the wind. Gaze on your holy face. 
and the shadow of your grace. I will sing your praises to the Lord. I believe. I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, wait for the Lord. Have courage and wait. Wait for the Lord. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 29, Ascribe to the Lord Glory. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts. We're following on from last week, the day of Pentecost. I'm reading Acts 2, beginning at chapter 14. Peter's sermon at Pentecost. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of evil men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Continuing on in verse 36. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would move in the power of your Spirit, Lord, amongst us now and help us hear what you would say to us today. 
And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, the Apostle Peter is, for me, one of the most interesting characters in the Bible. And indeed, one who I can not only empathize with, but also, through witnessing his journey of faith, be greatly encouraged and indeed inspired by. When I think of Peter, there are many images that immediately come to mind. I wonder what immediately comes to your mind when you think of him. For me, it would be that amazing walking on water incident. Should you remember? Remember the moment where he was filled with faith one minute, only to succumb to fear the next? Or maybe for you, it's in his declaring his undying commitment to Jesus, only then, of course, to deny him three times. Or how about when Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, earning a glowing commendation from Jesus, and the promise that he is blessed, and upon which he will be the rock which the church is built, and of course, in the very next encounter, Jesus rebukes him in the strongest fashion with the words, Get you behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. I mean, he was so impulsive, speaking before thinking, putting his mouth into gear, and then having to quickly put it into reverse. Like his journey of faith is really fascinating, and it's one that gives us all hope when we too realise our own faults and fears, our feelings, our insecurities, and maybe from time to time, our lack of faith. So here it is, as we read in this account in Acts 2, that of course we meet an altogether different Peter to the one that we have encountered through the Gospel narratives. Because it is here that we have Peter, once impulsive, fearful, anxious, denying, lacking even, now standing tall with the other eleven and addressing a large crowd as the Apostle's spokesperson. And he is speaking with authority and with passion, conviction and clarity. And of course we remember, don't we, that he was just an uneducated, poor, ordinary fisherman. Well, what a change. So what has changed? Well, according to commentators writing on this passage, the verb addressed in the passage relates to inspired utterance. So here was a man who was inspired, but not only inspired, but more importantly, he was empowered. Because this is Peter post-Pentecost, filled with holy boldness, wisdom and courage, and he's speaking with conviction and clarity. And what exactly is this new faith-filled and fearless Peter wanting now to get across to the throngs of listeners? Well, initially, he proceeds to correct them in their misapprehension that the apostles are drunk, citing that it is just before nine o'clock in the morning. Having done this, he can now begin to explain exactly what is happening. What we need to understand here is a basic concept and the underlying belief held by the Jewish people called the Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord. You see, the Jews never lost the conviction that they were God's chosen people and chosen for a special privilege amongst all the nations. And over time, as history unfolded and through many times of disaster and, of course, their own stubbornness and pride, they finally reached the conclusion that they could only look to God alone to do what they couldn't do for themselves. And of course that's a good point for us all to reach in our lives. That realisation that we actually need God. We need his forgiveness, his saving grace, mercy and favour in our lives. Even if we do feel that actually we're getting quite a long nicely without him. Well, the Jews would thus look to God to come and intervene directly in history and then exalt them to the honour that they dreamed of. The day of that anticipated intervention was known as the day of the Lord. And we remember that they were under Roman rule. The Romans were the occupying force to whom the Jews were of course subject to their governance, but also their taxes. Hands up, he likes taxes. So, according to biblical commentators, the Jews divided all time into two ages. There was the present age, 
which was evil and doomed to destruction. Then there was the age to come, which would be the golden age of God. Between the two then was the day of the Lord. And this was to be the terrible pangs of a new age. It would come suddenly like a thief in the night. It would be a day when the world would be shaken to its very foundations and a day of judgment and terror. Anybody looking forward to that? So anyway, here we have Peter saying to the Jews, for generations you have dreamed of the day of God, the day when God would break into history. And he says, now in Jesus, that day has arrived. God had arrived in person on the scene of human history in the form of his own son. But it was not in a manner or in line with the expectation of the Jewish people. There was no white steed chariots declaring war on the Roman Empire and seeking to overthrow it. No exalting of the Jews to positions of power and prestige. None of what they expected to happen when the Messiah arrived had occurred. And so the Apostle Peter would now take the time to explain just what had taken path, place in the recent past and how the people had actually missed the Messiah in their midst and worse than that, they had actually crucified him. Not good. He corrects then their assumption that the disciples are drunk as he relates their unusual behaviour to the prophet Joel and the promise that God would pour out his spirit on all people in a new way. And this is exciting news, not just for his listeners then, it's exciting news for us today. The same spirit which is now so evidently empowering Peter is available to everyone. Not just priests or good religious folk, but everyone, irrespective of class or creed, colour or political persuasion, male or female, young or old, rich or poor, the religious or the non-religious. It seems too good to be true, but Pentecost had ushered in a new paradigm shift in God's plan for his world. And what would simply be required wasn't to be based on credentials or knowledge or achievements. It was to be simply based on the attitude of the heart. Peter's call to his listeners is the same call of John the Baptist, a call to repentance, a decision of the head and the heart, to know our need of salvation and to follow Jesus, the one who has made a way for us to be forgiven and for us to receiving his Holy Spirit. So Peter's proclamation from the prophet Joel is in effect the ushering in of the last days. Salvation has been made possible through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. We are not a lost people and we are not a lost cause and we are not a people without hope. We can know the salvation of our loving Father God as we choose to put our faith, hope and trust in Jesus. And we can know the empowering and enabling of the Holy Spirit now poured out on all who seek to be filled by him where we can do even greater things than we ever hoped or imagined. We will then be empowered to bring the good news of salvation and transformation to all who will listen by proclamation with words and deeds and in the power of the same spirit that enabled and empowered this lowly uneducated fisherman to become a history maker and a world changer. Let us pray. Father, again, we, we give you thanks for Jesus. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, the one who empowers us and enables us to live the Christian life and to become the effective witnesses you call us to be. Lord, fill us afresh with your Spirit, Lord. Take away any fear our apprehension that we may have and help us to seek each day to continue to be filled with your spirit, leaded and guided and directed in our lives to the plan and purpose that you have for them. 
But we ask these things in Jesus' name. We're going to sing at this point. Uh, we're going to sing our next hymn. Uh, worship giving thanks with a grateful heart to God, our Father, His Son, and His Holy Spirit. We stand to sing. We sing this through twice. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayers. You alone, you alone understand and care. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet 
who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Collect for this Trinity Sunday, Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities for you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. The response this morning to God the Holy Trinity is here our prayer. God the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. God of the universe, Trinity of love, three persons in one God, we praise you for your glory and grace. As your people called to serve your kingdom, we bring our prayers for the world. Father of all, we pray for our government in Westminster and in Stormont. Grant wisdom to all in authority. We continue to make decisions as we emerge again from lockdown restrictions. Grant that all our politicians would work together for the common good, for justice, prosperity and peace for all. We pray for the ongoing situation with the protocol, that a compromise might be reached and one which is acceptable to all. And we pray that any planned protests over the summer months would be peaceful. We pray also for our police officers who so often get caught in the middle when conflict arises. God the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. We pray for Jerusalem and for Israel at this time. We are horrified to see innocent children caught up in bombings and conflict. We are dismayed as we witness indiscriminate attacks on both sides of the conflict. We pray for a peaceful solution to this seemingly never ending conflict. And as we do, we give you thanks, Father God, for peace in our own land. And we pray that we would never again return to the dark days of our own troubles. God, the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your church, for our Archbishop, for our bishops, clergy and lay ministers, and for all who serve in whatever way in your church. We pray for our new bishops in our province who have begun their tenure through the midst of a pandemic. We think of bishops David McClay, Andrew Forrester, George Davison, and Ian Ellis. Guide all to lead by word and by example. Grant wisdom and discernment to each as we journey on from the effects of COVID. God, the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. For ourselves, Father, we pray that you would inspire us by your Holy Spirit to be those who are motivated to grow in our faith and to reach a level of maturity that enables us to be effective witnesses. Grant us the same courage and commitment as those first disciples who even in the face of death and imprisonment did not deviate from their calling. God the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. Spirit of the living God, we remember all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who minister to them through care and medical skill. We pray for all who are receiving treatment and those who are commencing treatment soon. We pray for infants who need surgery and for parents and grandparents who are anxious and concerned. We pray for those who are struggling with anxiety or depression. We pray for healing for all. We pray for your peace and presence for those who are fearful are facing uncertain times. We pray for deliverance for those who are bound by chains of addiction. This morning, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. As we remember Jim and Myrtle Carberry, the passing of Jim's brother, Harry Carberry, whose funeral took place on Friday past in St. Aidan's. Comfort them, Lord, and console them, strengthen them, and give them the faith they need to face life again in the days ahead. God, the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. Father, bless all your people with gifts of faith, hope and love, and especially those for whom COVID has brought deep sadness, grief, loneliness, and isolation. We give you thanks for how many people are finding, rediscovering, or growing in their faith through this past year of uncertainty and challenge. We pray for those whose faith has dwindled and for any whose desire to come to church has all but died.
continue, we pray, to move by your spirit in hearts and minds across the world as we pray for a harvest of souls, one for your Son, our Saviour, in whose name we pray. We join all our prayers together as we turn to our order of service and we join together in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And some words of blessing before we have our closing hymn. May the peace of Christ go with us wherever he may send. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again unto our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen. We stand to sing our closing hymn of worship, Lord of the Church, we pray for our renewal.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.